In today's video, we'll be taking a look at what are accessible limbs and what is the purpose of an ARIA label. If you've ever tested your website using an automated tool like Lighthouse, that is PageSpeed Insights, then you may have come across this error which says, links do not have a discernible name. So what that just means is a screen reader user or a user with assistive technology has been presented with a link but there's no way to identify the link. It's kind of like how we have in some of these movies where they say this person could not be identified in the hospital. So there is no way to like trace the person's identity because there is no name. Until they know the name of the patient, that's the only way they can now start checking your medical history and other things like that. So that's the same thing with our elements. If there's no like, unique identifier, then it's difficult for the person to be able to interact with the element. So in today's video, we will be going through a couple of explanations on what accessible names are. I'll be using three live examples of like general questions that we might ask ourselves. And I'll then tie that back into this topic of the accessible names. So now let's jump right into it. To start off, what are accessible names? So I'll leave a link to this document in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. But essentially, an accessible name is a short string, typically one to three words that authors associate with an element to provide users of assistive technologies with a label for that element. So for example, an input field might have an accessible name of user ID or a button might be named submit. So let's say we're taking a form and you can say maybe name, the press, then you put an input area, you put the label will be something like email, you put an input area for the user to put in their text input and so on and so forth. Which now brings me to my first real life question and that is, if you had a form that you were filling with some list of questions and the first question says, what is your name? How would you respond? I would assume that your answer would be something direct like David Bright, not some long sentence like my name is David Bright because we don't really need that context again. We just need you to give us the direct answer, David Bright. So translating that into the web design space as well, when we are having links, Sometimes you don't need to start overly describing the link. Like I've seen a lot of people do where they want to put like their, maybe their logo and they were trying to give it an accessible name using ARIA label rather than just writing like maybe they've done homepage. They start to write links to the homepage or go to the homepage or some kind of long sentence. I'm not saying that is bad, but I'm saying that is just adding unnecessary information. It is redundant because the user knows it's a link and where is the link going to? He just needs to know the name of the link that he's trying to click on. The name of the link is the DevDen home or maybe the MDN docs homepage or any of those kind of names. So you just need to go directly to the name. Don't start trying to give us some kind of like background context to the name. Same thing with our images. When we are doing alt text for our images, you don't have to start writing this is an image of, and then give the description. You just go straight to your description. A man with dark hair, wearing a pair of tinted glasses or something like that. Go straight to the point. Don't start trying to give us the, like, the context. Like, this is the image of, or this links to those kind of context. It's not necessary. Next, what are the primary purposes for providing accessible names? The first use case is to convey the purpose or intent of the element. So let's say we have a linked icon. Let me start with Elementor. And that linked icon basically takes us to the privacy policy page. So the intent is that we're going to the privacy policy page. So that now becomes the accessible name. So what we just say is the name, it becomes privacy policy and 
the way it gets announced to a screen reader is using what we call the name, role, and value. So the name is privacy policy. The role, it's a link, so it is now call it a link. So a screen reader user will hear privacy policy link, and that gives them enough information to know that they are going to a page called the privacy policy. Same thing with your table of contents. If it is in page, you see all of these links. The same way you can just visually see this link and immediately know that it takes you to the in brief section without having to add too much extra information. That's the same way a screen reader user would be able to listen to the link. It will tell them in brief link and they will know that, okay, it's taking them to the section or the page called in brief. So let's go ahead and see it on the front end. Before we do that, let's now try to give it an accessible name. There are multiple ways we can give accessible names to elements. Let me go ahead and show you some of the ways. So the first way is by naming with child content. You can, that is how you see in this first example, this privacy, that is the child content. It is something visible that we can see directly. Then the second method is using area label because an icon does not have any visible text. We now have to rely on something else which they have been conveniently given to us as either area label or area labeled by. So there are the two ways we can do it. You can either use an area label or area labeled by. For today's example, we're mostly focusing on the area label. Then if you have like a form, like you have your form controls, you have the label and then you have the actual input where the user imputes their characters. So that label is the accessible name. That's why it's called label. And the counterpart is area label. So the label is something visible. Area label is not visible. Then you can also use field sets and legend. This is something quite new. Basically, it helps to group form controls together. So like literally you have some list of radio buttons. You can group them together into a field set and legend. The legend becomes the accessible name for the field set. Same thing with tables and figures. We have captions and fig captions. Then if all of these things are missing, the browser will now try to fall back to the title or the placeholder attribute. That are not title as in title, but the title attribute. You can see maybe something like a href equal to something, title equal to xyz. So if it has gone through all of these other techniques and it couldn't get an accessible name from it, then it will now rely finally on the title and placeholder. And then if that doesn't work, it, then it just reads out the URL to the user. So now let's go ahead and see how we can use the array label. To use array label in Elementor, you simply come. Before we do that, let's go ahead and see what it is without adding the array label. So on the front end, if I right click and inspect, I can just click on this tick man, which takes me to the accessibility tree. Then I'll go ahead and look at it. So this is the link and the accessible name is the privacy and the role is a link. So it is a privacy link. Go to the other one, inspect it and we'll see for this one, unfortunately, we have not given it a name. So that's why it just writes link and then it puts a blank space. Because there is no name, it will now try to fall back and just basically start reading out the URL for us. So to avoid just reading out a long string of URL, which nobody understands, we can now give it an accessible name. To do that, I'll come back to this tab. This is the icon. On the link itself, don't be tempted to go to the advanced tab and then attributes that will add the attributes to the wrapper and that wrapper doesn't actually do anything for the link so you have to come to the content to where the actual link is then you click on the link options which is the cog icon 
and you follow exactly what they wrote there, the key pipe value. So the key is area dash label, and then we'll do the pipe and the area label. So now we're trying to get the what is the intent. The purpose is that we're trying to get to the privacy policy page. So I'm gonna write privacy policy. And that's it. Gonna publish this. So now when we go back to the front end and I refresh the page and then I try to inspect it again. So inspect, go to the tree. And this time you now see, you now get privacy policy and link. So if you turn on the screen reader, these are to be announced privacy policy link. Because we've heard the role is a link, we know that it's going to take us somewhere. And where is it taking us to? It's taking us to the privacy policy page. So that's it. If you're using Bricks, it's easier. So with Bricks, we already have, this is the icon widget. We have our link taking us to a link. I'm just going to assume this is the privacy policy page. And we have it here directly, attributes, Area label, so we can just put it here and you just write privacy policy. We don't need to start writing go to the privacy policy or links to the privacy policy or any other kind of variation that some people would try to do. Let me go ahead and prove it. So let's say here we have this link that goes to the home page of the MDN docs. If you inspect it, what do you see? You get to see the area label just says MDN homepage. You don't have to start boring us with goes to the homepage or any other thing. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that's just redundant information. Then the next purpose of the area label is that it is used to distinguish the element from other elements on the page. Now here comes my second general question. Assuming you are a father of five daughters, and an eligible bachelor comes to your house and says he's looking for your daughter. What would be your natural response to him? I'm assuming you say, which one? Like, I have five daughters. You say you want to speak to my daughter. That is not enough information. I need to know which of them are you trying to speak to. So that is exactly what that is trying to convey, where he says, trying to like differentiate between elements. So... Let's say you have links for the navigation of your entire website. Then you have another set of links for in-page navigation. That is your table of contents. How do you then differentiate both of them? Because both of them are navigations. Visually, someone can look at it. That, okay, one's at the top, one is on the side and try to like piece the information together. But a screen reader user is seeing all of your content in like just a block. So top to bottom. He doesn't get that spatial awareness to say something is at the top or something is at the right or anything. So you have to now use that initiative and say, I'm going to differentiate them by giving them names. So that's why you have you have five children. You don't just like call all your children children. You now give them names like you say Angela or you say Jane, Janet, something to differentiate them. So that's the same thing. You come to these links. If I go ahead and inspect it, you'd see that this is a navigation and it has the area label of understanding docs. Then we have another one. If you inspect that, we have the area label of page contents. So that gives you enough information that, okay, this set of links is for my in-page contents or my table of contents or something like that. Whereas the other one is maybe like my primary navigation or you give it a name. Because they have multiple navigations, they also have navigations in the footer and all of that. You have to now differentiate all of these navigations. Otherwise, you can confuse a screen reader user because he just sees a set of links in one place, another set of links, another place, and he can't piece the information together easily, especially when he's now navigating using landmark regions. So how do we now give these accessible names to 
our like components. In Elementor, most of these components have the option for available. Let me go ahead and show you. If I come to Elementor edit page and I drop in something like the menu widget, which is the new menu widget, you see the name. So you can call it something like primary, which is usually the case for your primary navigation. But that's like a standard now. People just call it primary. Like I said, it's the intent you are just going to give it. You're not going to start describing it, saying like goes to the primary navigation or some kind of long name. You're just giving us the descriptive name. So it is the primary navigation. So, and like I already mentioned before, the way it is read to a screen reader is it starts with the name followed by the role, then the value. So we don't need to start adding the role into the name again because the screen reader is going to already announce that role. Let me sh now show you an example. This is primary. So if I publish it and we go to the front end, refresh, and I come to this menu widget, inspect it. You see, it has our navigation with an area label of primary. And when I go to the accessibility tree, this is what we get. We get the list, all of these. So now this is what is going to be announced. It's going to be announced as primary navigation. So name followed by the role. And then if there's any value like area expanded, area selected, all of those things, those things will now be announced after. So it starts with the name, the role, and then whatever states, property, or value that exists, it will also like read those out. If you are a Bricks user, it's basically the same thing. If I go and I drop in the nav nestable widget, you see if I come to the nav nestable, it should have the available, which if I call it maybe primary as well, I save it. And we go ahead and we preview it on the front end. Let me right click, inspect. You see the nav. And then it has the array label equal to primary. If I click on the accessibility tree and we go down to it, it's the same thing. So you're going to see primary navigation. So that's how it's going to be announced to a screen reader. And then the user understands it. So that is accessible names in a nutshell. You're either trying to convey the intent or purpose of an element, or you're trying to differentiate one element from other elements that are the same. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something from it. In a future video, I might go more in depth into all of this accessibility, but this is just like trying to like broaden your mind to understand what some of these things actually mean. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.